Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive number one, number two employee. Leave a message at the... Hey, Jamie, it's me, Jamie. This is your daily pep talk. I know it's been rough going ever since people found out about your acapella group, Mad Harmony, but you will bounce back. I mean, you're the guy always helping people find coverage options with the Name Your Price tool. It should be you giving me the pep talk. Now get out there, hit that high note, and take Mad Harmony all the way to nationals this year! Sorry, this is pitchy. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome, readers. Today on Book Chat, joining me are my three book bloggers, one series read-along co-host, Casey and Nicola. We are discussing the third and final book in our fall trilogy read-along, Wildfire, by Ilona Andrews. Stay tuned. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Join in this book discussion by finding me on Twitter as well as my co-host. Tweet at us using our special hashtag 3Bloggers1Series. That's using the numeric 3 and 1. Again, it's hashtag 3Bloggers1Series. If Twitter isn't your thing, no worries. You can join the Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official, and talk about the series with us there, as well as other bookish topics. I hope to hear your thoughts on the book discussion. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with one book nerd friend or on your favorite social media space. That would really help me out, and I appreciate you. Before we get started, I have to issue my standard spoiler warning. This is a roundtable book discussion, so nothing is off limits. You've been warned. We've got a fun hour ahead of us, so let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back. We are here talking about the third and final book in the trilogy, which is Wildfire. And joining me as always are the three bloggers, one series read along co-host, Casey and Nicola. Casey, why don't you start us off with the book stats? Hey everybody. So Wildfire was first published in July of 2017 by Avon. The book has 391 pages. The ebook is 405 pages. And the audiobook, which is narrated by Renee Rodman, is 12 hours and 44 minutes. The synopsis, as we do, Nicola, please. Sure. It says, uh, from Alona Andrews, number one New York Times bestselling author, the thrilling conclusion, and editorial aside, it totally was, to her hidden legacy (laughs) series as Nevada and Rogan grapple with a power beyond even their imagination. Nevada Baylor can't decide which is more frustrating, harnessing her truth-seeking abilities or dealing with Connor, Mad, Rogan, and their evolving relationship. Yes, the billionaire prime is helping her navigate the complex magical world in which she's become a crucial player and sometimes a pawn, but she also has to deal with his ex fiance whose husband has disappeared and whose damsel in distress act is wearing very, very thin. Rogan faces his own challenges, too, as Nevada's magical rank has made her a desirable match for other primes. Controlling his immense powers is child's play next to controlling his conflicting emotions. And now he and Nevada are confronted by a new threat within her own family. Can they face this together or is their world about to go up in smoke? Okay. Let's talk about this book, y'all. There was a lot going on in this book, I gotta say. Definitely. There was a lot. Oh, yeah. I don't even know where to start. Okay, there's so much. <laughs> let's, start with, let's start with Victoria. Let's start with the grandmother. Oh, man, that grandmother. She is like the worst grandmother you can ask for. <laughs> right. She's such an opposite from, uh, from the, the machine oil and gun grandma, whose name is escaping me right now. She's not maternal at all. She's a psychopath. Yeah, she is. Total, she has no remorse for anything she did to her own son, you know, and to all those people that she wrecked trying to find him. She's just like, yeah, that's how it works. That's, that's, I would do it again. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, when her son fled and she wasn't able to find him, you know, we learned that she pretty much, you know, just went around blasting people's minds, trying to find out where her son went. And when she couldn't find him, she was like, oh, I'm so proud of him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, like I couldn't even find him. <laughs> yeah, th- she's just, she's she's a character. Um, I like how she's portrayed. She's very 
she's not like a a flat villain. She's definitely like completely bad, but she's interesting too, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like there was that one scene where, you know, um Nevada basically had to agree to meet with the woman so she would stop coming for her. Right. And during this conversation, you know, they kind of ba- have a battle of wills between the two of them. And then finally, when, you know, someone busts in and try to yeah. kill her, she actually protects her. She's like, well, you're my granddaughter. What do you expect me to do? I'm not going <laughs> to let someone else hurt you, but, you know, I'll hurt you. Right, but I'm not right. Someone else do it. Well, if, let those yeah. take her, if, she, if she let, <laughs> if Victoria let the other group take her, then she's like, I'm not sure that was very familial. I thought it was more like fighting over a possession, you know, like it possibly. I mean, she says it's because your family, but like, really, it's like, well, if, if, uh, uh, that faction kidnaps her successfully, then I don't get to have her either. So, <laughs> like, and it also makes her look weak, right? Like she can't keep control of her granddaughter. Yeah. Oh well, not yeah. just control of her da- granddaughter. She wants to be viewed as the most powerful, the most feared. She wants mm-hmm. that. Like even in that conversation, you know, I guess she said something like, "Oh, you know, I guess Nevada says." oh, you're a horrible person or something. Whatever they said Nevada was, you know, when they realized how powerful she was. Abomination. An abomination. She's like, oh, you've experienced that. Great. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 yeah, like you're as powerful as me. And, you know, she's not letting, she welcomes that. She's like, be yeah. scared of me. Yeah. I'm the best. I'm the most powerful. I'm the strongest. And that's how she wants it to stay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, absolutely. And I think Nevada knows that she also has to be strong or she'll be used. So uh, mm-hmm. so she understands the value of that reputation, um, but it doesn't have to come with cruelty, you know? Yes, you can be feared and not be a cruel person. It's really people's own interpretation of you um, because mm-hmm. they're, they know what you can do. Mm-hmm. So I think the threat alone, because Nevada has not proven herself to be crazy at all or like her grandmother at all but the fact that she's just related to her Mm -hmm. and they're like oh yeah like oh shit she could do what she does oh she's get her away from me kind of thing yeah right right like when uh schaefer was it david was the first name when the other truth seeker that wanted to marry her like ran away (laughs) that was kind of funny (laughs) Which, on a side note, that was the coolest thing that Rogan did. Yes. He's like, sure, come on in and watch her break this guy. Come on. (laughs) Everybody, everybody come watch. Everybody come watch. And then it's so funny because he's like, um, he like did that because he knew that Nevada wasn't attracted to him. And now she never will be because he's such a chicken shit. He's like, he was by design. Not only, but they. Well, also the guy wanted somebody weaker than him like he kept saying during their date like i'm the most powerful i'm the best i need somebody who's as good as i am but i'm still the best and rogan's like bitch she's better than you (laughs) and i'm gonna prove it right right i'm gonna shove it in your face during that date he was making some assumptions even though he said to her i don't know if you're more powerful than me but i mm-hmm. think he was just taking it on general you know gp that he was stronger right. yeah so, and and rogan knew that so yeah come on in and watch come on in because he knew he would be intimidated by it yep mm-hmm. and take off yep and i loved in that scene how rogan protected her like everybody else was like stop her stop her she's gonna burn out you know and he's like nope she's got it nope She's got it. She's good. Stop distracting her. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. Which was, that was awesome. That was an awesome display at the end there. I'm like, man, this woman, she is frightful. If she, if she needs something from you, that is terrifying. It is. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. Yeah. You can't keep a secret from her. You will die trying. Yeah. That was, that was a great, great scene. Yeah, it was. And it very much impressed Grandma Victoria. She's oh, like, she oh, yes, it. you are my granddaughter. My Everything is good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, before she gets cr- carted off to jail or she's in jail or wherever the hell they take mm-hmm. her. She's like, oh, I get to watch. I'm so excited. This is my spawn. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, 
This is everything I wanted and more. Yes, yes, which is really creepy, by the way. But <laughs> very creepy. Oh my god, the way she made her son was just absolutely terrifying and heartbreaking, and like, oh god, was this a? Yeah. This was not. Like, this was a reread for all of us, right? Yes. yes. So, yes. so was any. I can't remember whether I was surprised about the. I mean, I. I can't remember where you start to figure out that Arabella is actually another beast of Cologne. When you, when the first time you it read it. I kind of hinted at it before, but this was the first time where you actually like see her right. in her form. Right. Mm-hmm. So she, she comes, she does, she shows up in the first book, but they don't describe what she is. They just say like, she swoops in and, and carries off um, Catalina after she, um, does her thing but she doesn't fight she just she's like a extraction yeah. yeah so but and they don't describe her form right they just say she took care of it mm-hmm. yeah and i think i'm having a hard time knowing exactly because i'd read it i already know what she was so maybe i was just yeah. using my own yeah knowledge <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think when you read it the second time when you do the reread you see all these hints about it throughout the first two books mm-hmm. and this one too because she talks about you know reading that book and she already knew this one story by heart you know um but you don't know mm-hmm. why necessarily so mm-hmm. so this is really the book where or like last book i think you you really got introduced to catalina and what she could do and this book you you find out what arabella can do and leon too and leon so, yeah uh, I'm so happy that poor Leon. Yes, but I'm so happy that there's been another there's another trilogy in the works, which we've already we talked about a little bit. But the reason that makes me happy is not only because I love Catalina, but it makes me hopeful that we'll get stories about Arabella and Byrne and Leon too. Yes, we probably will get some time jumps along the way too, so they can right, get older. Right, uh-huh. and I'm really hoping for a novella between. Uh, Penelope and Hart. Mm, that would be fun. There's definitely something going on there. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. So, she deserves happiness. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. <laughs> Since you brought up the siblings, I would love to talk more about their powers, um, especially like Leon. Yeah, like that kid, man. He was desperate to have a power. He had no clue what it was, and then it kind of like actually Nevada's mother knew. Yeah, she knew there was that moment mm-hmm. where. Uh, where Nevada realized that her mother had to have known a long time ago. Yeah. And it's kind of like, I can't remember exactly what they called his power, but basically he is like an assassin. And now he's like, I'm going to be the family assassin. I'm going to be the dark horse. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I'll be the dark horse. No one needs to know. (laughs) Yeah. He's not going to register. And because did they talk about dark horses before? I can't remember. I think they did. Um, I'm getting, I if, think they did. I'm getting a little if they did, it was in passing. Yeah, I'm getting a little mixed up with the later books, right? So I think it may have come up more in Catalina's book that came out um, last fall. Which, by the way, when I realized we were doing this trilogy, I put the brakes on that book, so I haven't <laughs> finished it because I didn't want to get confused, so I stopped immediately. Well, I didn't because so. I love it too much. <laughs> I think they mentioned the Dark Horse in book two. When they were talking about all the different families and the powerhouses and what they do, and especially like in relation to Cornelius and how he left his family, even though he was still powerful. Like I, they talked about dark horses before. Okay. I don't know how much more detail they go into in the future books, but they did mention it right. here. That sounds right. Well, this is important for their family, and I think they actually need it. They need him to be the dark horse. And so while he's not, like, murder happy or anything, it's really smart to have one, especially if he knows he's the perfect person to be that. You know, I kind of thought, oh, wow, he's growing up. Like, he wanted to be, like... Rogan so bad he wants to he wanted to be in the spotlight he wanted to have an awesome power and now he's kind of shifted he's like I do have this uh, amazing ability but I'm going to use it to save our family if needed well he had that moment where he realized you know it wasn't a game and he actually just killed all those people and he turned around and threw up because he's like oh my Uh god what am I doing because he's still what a 17 year old boy he's a kid he's a baby like he's yeah he's a kid he doesn't he didn't realize that he was killing all these people he kept thinking of it as a game and then 
the one officer came and talked to him about PTSD and the trauma. And then he's like, oh, yeah, now I'm going to be the family assassin. <laughs> so it gave him that, you know, direction. And he's not going to go around killing for fun, but to protect his family. I mean, honestly, I think that was the best idea that Rogan had Nevada take him. She didn't want to, but uh-huh. that saved them. Like, he is the oh, perfect absolutely. person to have as a wingman because you don't see it coming. And he moved so fast. You don't. He killed yeah. all those people, like, in a blink of an eye. It was crazy how fast he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if they'll be able to keep it a secret. I mean, now, like, several people know that, that he took down eight people in the tea box in like two seconds. So I, yeah. his, his idea of remaining a dark horse, there's a lot, there's a lot that could turn into a story there is all I'm saying. So yeah, it's probably not a secret you can keep for long. Well, if he doesn't register and they kind of try to keep it quiet, that maybe, you know, people won't know as much or won't realize how strong he is. And that's where he can keep his dark horse ability, but it will come out eventually, especially if he keeps doing stuff like this, like killing eight people in two seconds. It'll be a great story. I think that he could keep it a secret for a long time because, well, we in this book, you know, they went about all the steps to kind of like cover up what actually happened. So we don't know how many mm-hmm. people are actually going to see that, but the people who vis- physically saw it are dead <laughs> in Nevada. Um, so, or well, they're Rogan's people and they're loyal forever. So. They weren't there yet. But they saw the aftermath. They know. It's on video. They all watched the video. Right. But they also talked about how they would clean it up. So I feel mm-hmm. like the video will certainly not be available. Oh, definitely. Well, Lenora knows and um, the the witness for the, I forget his name, the, the older guy that was their witness for the filing of the house knows and the cop knows. So, what cop? The cop who showed up right after. There was, oh, oh Rogan's man? No, no, no. no oh, Rogan's man. No, no. It was, oh, well. Like a Houston PD. I think he suspects, but he doesn't know because I was just listening to that and I feel like Okay, so Nevada was running her mouth before their attorney showed up. Mm-hmm. It was like, she has nothing to say. Shut up, girl, basically. <laughs> Stop talking right now. Yeah. So she didn't actually yeah. say yeah. it. I'm sure he probably has some suspicions, but I don't I don't know if he actually knows. Yeah, probably not. He's well, he doesn't know how fast it happened, but he he sees the eight corpses yes you can't hide the corpses the corpses are there yeah but i'm saying like he's a i'm just saying i don't think it's obvious for that cop to just assume that kid did it unless someone tells him or he sees the video if he doesn't see the video and no one tells him he could probably make some assumptions but it's not proof yeah but he doesn't know for sure yeah right that makes sense well, I think he'll be back because he showed up in the first book. So there's no reason to bring him into the second book unless he has a role in the future. I mean, they need allies, you know, so maybe in the future they have some people on the police that they confide in. I guess that's possible. I mean, once they're up in the well, house, you know, they don't have to deal with the cops at all. They can just say it's house business and the cops run away. It's house business. Yeah. Right. Right. I just, I think it's interesting that he showed up again. Oh, no, it's very um, interesting. Usually when minor characters show up multiple times, they have a bigger role later, definitely. Yeah. So, you know, the whole conspiracy thing is basically the the magical versus the non-magical. And so this guy is a representative of the non-magical. So I, I just think that that we'll see him again okay stop talking about stuff you know stop it nicola (laughs) i don't know i don't know that so i don't know that it's not it has not happened yet so i'm speculating it is is not a spoiler it's a speculation okay thank you for clarifying that because i'm like oh (laughs) i know i can be bad about that sorry everybody so okay so we know that Out of everyone after their trials, they have a high significant, they have three primes, and we think Leon Mm -hmm. could be either a high significant or, like, border, because they're saying he's really high. So, Mm. they have a lot of powerful people in their house. That's 
Mm-hmm. They're secure yeah. in their house. No wonder uh, Tremaine yeah. wanted them so bad. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And they're tied to Rogan forever. Oh, they are. Because she announced their engagement in front of everybody. And it was so cute. It was, it was. cute. And I mean, he just told her, don't do it. And she goes, I just saw a shock on I'm his face. It. And I'll forget. I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. <laughs> like she got joy out of shocking him like that. It was kind of cute. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about like the other stuff that's going on in the book. Like, um, Rinda, man, that girl, that woman. Oh my God. <laughs> I have always depended on the kindness All of right. others. Like, shut up, girl. Like, go sit down. Like, take a seat. <laughs> like, she really is. Like, Rogan is her plan B, or was, until she realized oh, yeah, that he absolutely. could not be plan B because she just got checked, okay? Even even the grandmother, I think, was like, you better check that bitch. She tried to steal your man. Like, uh. Are you- oh, right from the yeah. beginning. Grandma oh, was yeah. Like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Um, out, 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 out. Yeah, the sisters are like, man, she coming for your man. Like, what? <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. And I did not like her at all. She's such a. I didn't like her all the way up until the point where she attacked her husband with her power. I was like, damn, that's what you get, man. Mm-hmm. That's what you get. Yeah, he yeah, definitely that cool. deserved that. Yeah, she- but still, like, she didn't change because she immediately married the other brother. Yeah. But she'd yeah. been in love with him or he'd been it's in okay. love with her. Yeah, it, but it's, it's okay from- for secondary characters not to grow. Yeah. That's okay. I mean, she did grow in the fact that she realized that Rogan was not an option. So she finally, finally backed the fuck off because... It's not an option. Like that one scene, it just killed me. Like going through that again, where, you know, they just had sex and she's like, oh, the kid's crying. I need help. And he actually gets up and go, I'm like, boy, are you dumb? Are you dumb? He's very dumb. And he tells Nevada to just wait for him. And she waits for a while. And she's like, screw this. I'm out of here. It's been an hour. I'm like, oh, you're so rude. Like that is, I am not. That's dumb man stuff right there. Like for real. (laughs) I, well, I think Rinda and Nevada are just so polar opposite. I think mm-hmm. that's that's one function that that character had in this book. She's so passive about everything. She wants someone else to protect her for everything. She wants someone else to take care of her. She wants someone else to do all the hard work. And, you know, they both have these sort of mental powers. Um, but... Um, and I, I haven't sort of formulated a theory about the empath versus the truth seeking, but I feel like there's some kind of, um, uh, opposing line you could draw between them because as an empath, you're, you're, they're both kind of sensing things, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know, but, but generally speaking, they're, they're both set up to have, and she's a prime, right? So, she is. Is, so, yeah. uh, so they're both set up to be equally powerful, but Rinda has just abdicated and wanted a man to take care of her all the time for about everything. And Nevada is the total opposite of that. Well, it's also unfortunate to hear like she essentially on purpose shut down her, the use of her powers Uh so that she did not have to hear like, or feel how her husband actually felt about, you know, her and her kids on a daily basis. Like, yeah. Yeah. I can't. I know house politics, power struggle, all of that. It probably is better, you know, from the outside to stay married to him for protection or whatever. But damn, man, I I make his life miserable. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of the house marriages are, you know, we've we've seen that set up that the house marriages are not necessarily about emotions and love, but but it's pretty freaking cold to be okay with having your kids executed. I know. Yeah. I oh, know that yeah. was horrible. Like you are okay with having your kids killed and you're going to kill your wife when it was all said and done. You were going to kill everybody just so you could escape. Start over. Yeah. So you could start over Ugh. with new yeah. kids. Oh, ugh. I really liked that little sort of, there was a very small part in there where, where Byrne was like, yeah, he's not a dud. Yeah. He's got, he's got the, 
this pattern recognition thing going on, which I am fascinated by. So I hope we, even though Bernazel is quote only a significant, I hope he gets some sto- some page time too. I don't know. I'd be curious to see how that develops. If it's something else more than that, or if he can use it in a different kind of way, kind of like how to me, the Renda thing was a surprise. Yes. She's um, an empath and can take in feelings, but who knew she could, turn them around and push them back out on someone. I feel like that's yeah. probably just yeah. a prime thing to be able to do. Um, but yeah. Well, that's the active field versus the passive field thing, right? Right. Right. So that makes me think that maybe Burn has something else we haven't seen. Absolutely. That's, you know, that's more active or stronger mm-hmm. or whatever. There was a scene that I highlighted with Burn in it that, that I really liked i thought it was pretty indicative of his character where they're they're driving back from the house and victoria tremaine calls and sets up the the meeting and um um, nevada says uh, do you want me to drop you off and burn says no and pulls out his phone what are you doing texting bug i want to know what we're driving into i want him to get eyes in the restaurant and i want him to get us some backup so he's taking a lot of initiative there and he's talking about, and it's his strength because he's talking about information gathering, right. And making mm-hmm. sure that there's, there's a um, good backup for Nevada. And Nevada just like runs headlong into everything. Right. So, so I love that Byrne kind of took over and was like, yeah, okay. If you're going to do this, which is crazy, you're not doing it without backup. And here's all the things we need to do. Check, 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 check. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 it was a small thing, but I really thought it was um, uh, something I like about him. Oh yeah, no, he's very detail oriented mm-hmm. and very much like we need to have the backup. We need to know what's happening. We need to know everything and not just run headlong yeah. in there with our gun the way Nevada does. Yeah, he's tactical. Oh yeah, tactical, he has tactical skill. Yeah, but I think that was the one of the first times that he actually took an initiative where, um, you know, in the up to now, he's mostly just been responding to things that Nevada wanted. Like, okay, I'll get you the dossier on this. Okay, I'll look mm-hmm. at that. Bit of homework for for Leon and, and help him. You know, it, it's it's been a res- a response as opposed to a, a taking the initiative. So, well, most of the time he's at school. Yeah, he's at school, or he's behind the computer, mm-hmm. so he's not really in the field or driving around with her or things. It's not a really, criticism. I feel like. I just feel like they're bringing him a little bit more into the spotlight, which I love. Yes, definitely. I think all of the secondary characters got a lot more face time in this book. All of them, actually. Like, not all of them were made. Obviously, Nevada and Rogan are the main characters, but I feel like all of them kind of got more time to shine in this book. All the sit, all the family, even Cornelius, you know, even the grandmother, and the grandmother, yeah, yeah. Cornelius. Yeah, even the grandmother, she had a couple of, you know, words during the battle. Yeah. <laughs> Usually yeah. she's not a part of that. You know who had less page time in this book was Rogan. And I thought that was really interesting. He was definitely kind of the backseat driver in this. Um, it was Nevada on her own from almost everything except for the final scene. Right. And they're mm-hmm. talking and their relationship is growing, but Rogan is not out there fighting with her. He's like showing up late every time to clean up. <laughs> Which I don't hate. It's because which I'm not. I'm not mad about. Don't 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 get me yeah. wrong. I'm not mad about it. I like it because you know we've talked in earlier podcasts about how we were kind of like if you had to classify Rogan as a good guy or a bad guy, he kind of kind of straddles the line. But I think he kind of changes in this book from the guy who's always in charge of everything and has to be in charge of everything to an enabler and a helper and somebody that can be a partner. Hmm. And I think that change is directly from him seeing how powerful Nevada actually is. So before he really had a, a, I mean, he kind of always knew she was powerful, I think, especially when she started flexing her muscle with him. But I think now he sees how she operates and he also knows that her family around her are also powerful. He doesn't have to be so damn aggressive because... 
they can take care of themselves for the most part. I mean, I think he's fighting that instinct to try to bubble wrap her and let her do her thing, but he knows she can. So he's purposely kind of suppressing that. And I think that shows growth for him. He definitely wants to bubble wrap her. He said, if he could find the bulletproof kind of bubble wrap, he would wrap her up. Um, Yeah. But he knows he he can't. 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 It would break her. Like that's not who she is. And I think he would lose her if he tried it and he knows it. I think he really learned that with Rina, Rina, however you say her name, because, you know, she kept Rinda. She kept throwing herself on him and like, save me, save me the way he wants to be wanted. Like, especially in the first book where he's like, I have to come in and save you. But then he'd look over at Nevada and she'd be covered in blood and like, yeah, I killed the guy. I'm good. And he's like, no, you're you're what I want. So yeah. It was that stark comparison for him to say, this is what I think I want, but this is what I really want. And that kind of, you know, they're polar opposites. And Nevada's not. Yeah, I didn't even think that. I didn't even think that Rogan considered Renda at all. I think he was just being um, like a dumb guy and not seeing what she was trying to do because he wasn't thinking about her like that. Well, not necessarily thinking about her like that, but, you know, he was always the big powerful guy. He was always the one people depended on. He was always the one in the midst of the battle. And he's probably only mostly seen women or other primes who need him the way she did. Whereas Nevada comes Mm. in like all of his loyal workers who were with him in the jungle. And she's like, yeah, I can kick ass. I can defeat my enemies. I don't need you this way. And he had to like, see that stark comparison and take that step back while still, you know, wanting to wrap her up in bubble wrap because he doesn't want her hurt. You know, I think that's really the the underlying trope under almost all sort of alpha hero romances, right? Oh yeah. So there's different kinds of romances, but the, the particular kind where we've got this super powerful guy, whether he's a billionaire or Navy SEAL or whatever makes him powerful. And he's used to sort of, running over everybody around him. Um, And then he meets somebody who can stand up to him and who is in fact an equal. And it's not just about like, I'm not afraid of you, but I can actually go toe to toe with you. And I am actually your equal. And, Mm -hmm. and their arc, the hero's arc of accepting that and being able to, to, to be interdependent instead of being the one that everybody depends on. And, you know, I think there's a little of that Mm -hmm. in, Nevada too, because she's been the one that the whole family's been relying on for a while. Um, yeah. And now she's starting to see the potential in the rest of her family. She sees that Rogan, you know, Rogan helps her and she, she has trouble with that. And she eventually learns to accept that help and to work together and to, to leverage both of their strengths, you know? So I think yep. mm-hmm. Alona Andrews, the team is particularly good at that. They take these two super independent people, put them together, make them uncomfortable, and then they figure out that, you know, not only are they in love and they want to, to, to have all the emotional stuff, but they have to figure out personality-wise that they can work together and they can be a team. Yeah. You know, these kind of pairings, it gives me faith that two alphas can be yes. together. Yes. Yes. Definitely. And, and I, that yeah. was my favorite. Can I bring in another book? That was my favorite yeah. um, Lena sure. Singh book was, um, and I, the titles escaped me, but it was the, the mercy and um, um, I'm forgetting the other name, but they had an alpha oh, from Riley. the leopards. Riley. Yes. Riley. His name yes. is Riley. Yes. They had an alpha from the leopards and an alpha from, from the um, wolves and they put them together and, and they they very explicitly said they're both alphas, and usually that mm-hmm. doesn't work. And they made it work, and I just love that. That that was my favorite of of the whole series because of that specifically. That is also what makes these kind of relationships so fun to read yes. because there is that tug of war at times, but then there, you know sometimes one concedes, sometimes the other, and it's kind of like a balancing act because they're both alpha personalities and i think that's what makes it more fun than any kind of three three way <laughs> situation i'd rather this any day yeah and and neither one of them ends up being okay i'm going to be the one that stays home and does the housework you know they, yeah, they, right. they work it out and they become more equal 
and if I can bring up like another weird example, I, I, um, one of my friends who is gay um, was talking about his relationship with his, um, his partner. And it was funny, but it never really struck me. You know, I said very jokingly, well, who's the wife. Right. Um, and I have the relationship with him where that was not going to be offensive to him, but, but it really made me think it's like, wow, when you don't have those roles pre-assigned and it's just up for, based on the individuals and how they relate with each other and, and who's better at what and who cares about which things. Um, it's, it's really surprising how it was, it was an eye opener to me how much I still make assumptions based on gender. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, I know I don't do that cause I'm the alpha. <laughs> so I know wholeheartedly. I feel like that too, but, but it still mm-hmm. is there in the back of, it was still there in the back of my mind, I guess, where I, I felt like one person had mm-hmm. to do, all of this kind of thing and the other person would do most of that kind of thing. And then they sort of negotiate, but it doesn't have to Mm. be that way. It can just, these are all a whole list of things that need to happen. And who, who does them? It's not like this is a Mm -hmm. kind of, Mm -hmm. this is housework and this is uh, breadwinning and, you know, I don't know. So maybe I'm just rambling now. Sorry. (laughs) Yeah. And bad. It's okay. It ties in. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what else should we cover? I feel like we got a lot of the relationship stuff. We got the powers. Well, let's talk about Brian, the kidnapped husband. So back to sh- to David, David Sherwood. Let's talk about David Sherwood, bad guy. That kind of guy, like honestly, knowing how he felt about me and my kids, and then knowing like mm-hmm. he wanted to get away from that man i don't know how they had kids because it's dry as a desert dude dry as a fucking <laughs> desert and everybody wants to feel desired at some point so Ugh. if he felt desire she'd be attracted to it i guess i don't know but he's well the worst. i don't know if he, that he was quite that terrible before the kids were born right because he was still hoping for a uh, powerful offspring It's crazy the lengths that he is willing to go through to avoid a damn divorce. (laughs) I know. Because of his brother. So so not only is he trying to avoid a divorce, he's trying to avoid Mm -hmm. work, right? (laughs) His brother told him that if you divorce her, then I'm stepping down and you'll have to do work. And he's like, ew, I don't want to do that. That's dumb as fuck. I, if I were him, I'd be like, fine, I need out of this shit. I don't care. I'll do the work. But, you know, he is like such a creep in so many ways. Like he's lazy. He's a coward. He's like all the bad stuff, like muddled together. Yes. Yep. Weak. Weak yeah. as weak. So weak. Total weak sauce. So that, and that's, you know, <laughs> those of us who are reading these kind of books, like even Vincent, I'd rather have Vincent than, than, uh, than David, right? Vincent at least cares about stuff and like, is he a psychopath? Yes. But is he powerful? Absolutely. Yeah. And mm-hmm. theoretically David is too, but we never see it, right? He's a prime, but what do we see? We just see stuff that he has done making all these mushrooms grow or whatever. Um, and his brother Edward, you know, comes through in the battle, right? And he does, mm-hmm. does stuff. But David is like never does anything in the whole mm-hmm. book. You never see him acting. No. I wonder who's here. No, he's very passive. Yeah, he's just lazy. He's passive aggressive and lazy. And you know, if they hadn't approached him, how long would it have? been until he did something because he couldn't go out and find an assassin because he was scared it'd be traced back to him yeah yeah and he doesn't work so i wonder why you know. he have an affair like are children from an affair not part of your house i don't know how that works but no like if you i don't have think a, so if you have a child out of wedlock and they're a prime and you're a prime and your your um, legal children are you know less powerful like That'd be an interesting political, I don't think that comes up in the story. So Now, would. see, that is, I think, an interesting take because clearly having, a, you know, a lover or whatever on the side is norm for these kind of relationships, you know, because Nevada mm-hmm. Express, she didn't want that. She couldn't have that, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But you never hear about kids out of wedlock. So maybe they just know they 
are going to sleep with other people. They're going to have side relationships, but you do everything in your power not to get pregnant by these other people. So you are extra, 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 extra careful, maybe. Right. Well, in the previous books, when they talked about it, the marriages were all about the genetics and then the mm-hmm. affairs and were, the more about, were more about, um, yeah. Uh, and Personal but the affairs were more about, yeah. Um, or even social advancement. Right. But, um, right. but mm-hmm. the- for that matter, you don't want kids with the guy you're having the affair with. You don't, you don't right. want to yeah. muddy the water. You're not, you're not a genetic match, but what if right. you think that you have a better chance of having a powerful child outside of your marriage? That'd be that they haven't, they haven't addressed that. That'd be so interesting. That was, yeah. Are you listening Alona and, and Gordon? So, cause that's an idea you could <laughs> just saying, I have that one for free. So. But I mean, but the way the house structures are so rigid and the way the whole, I guess, community is formed, you know, about the whole house rules and mm-hmm. house business. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't seem like even if you might have a better match with someone else, it seems like you wouldn't want to cross that line because no one wants to get divorced. They'd rather kill you than yep. get, get divorced. So, um I don't know. I just can't imagine. Even if it could be a better match, I think they just say, well, the match is made. Yeah. I think there was, there was a comment in one of the earlier books, I think, about one of the European families having a bunch of, of offspring, but I could be wrong. It was in passing. Maybe it was in the um, the novella because they talk more about the European houses there. Mm. But Yeah, I, I don't uh, remember it so long ago. Okay. The, the novella right. anyway. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop talking about that. It's an, it's an interesting side, side journey, right? Tangent. Yes. That's what's so great about these, these worlds. They feel so real. You're like, all I'm always speculating about, well, what about this? And you, it doesn't occur to you like, well, then Gordon and Alona would have to figure that out and make it up. Like, no, there's something there. Yeah. Like, how would it be? Cause there, there's, there's rules and you could just imagine all these different things happening that aren't part of the actual text. Mm-hmm. But I got to say, I thought that was pretty cool that the brother oft is, you know, traded, you know, deceitful brother in the end. He just went uh-huh. right up and just stabbed him in the gut. You're With done. sword like a knight. The, yes. Good. And then he was like, our house business is concluded. Right. It's over. Thank you very yeah. much. This is, we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I feel like even more happened in this book, but... I don't know what, if that makes it was, sense. It was a long like, As I was reading happened. it, I was like, this is intense and there's so much going on. And now I'm like, well, what else did we talk about? Or what haven't we talked about yet? Well, there was this, there was the case with Rinda and the Sherwoods, right? And there mm-hmm. was the, um, which led to the big confrontation with the uh, bigger arc with the weather mage. And there was also, um, um, Rogan and um, Nevada's relationship. There was introductions for, there was more page time for Byrne and Leon um, Mm -hmm. and Arabella. I think Catalina had a similar role as in the last book, right? She kind of came in and helped. Yeah. uh, But I wouldn't say she changed a lot between the two books. Um, I'm still fascinated. Well, it's not her time to change. No, it's not. But she I'm just comes saying, later. I'm just saying, you know, things that were new and the, the, the things that were going on in this book that weren't before. Yeah. Um, so we see Byrne actually solves the solves the mystery, right? So um, with the paintings at the end. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And um, so I think it's 400 pages. So it, it's another like 50 or 60 more than, than typical for this kind of book. Um, so I think there's just, there is a lot going on. And then there's the trials at the end. Let's talk about the trials. What did you guys think? I thought it was awesome. I love the trials. Yeah. It was so exciting. I feel like, oh, and, and Arabella, man. Oh my God. I relate to her <laughs> in so many ways because her her trial was okay we're gonna test your reason and they're like we're gonna do it with math and she's like for real like math i have to be a a report or something (laughs) (laughs) and i i mean not even being funny math i was the worst at math um me too so she does all that work on that last problem and then she's like 
writing like screw you or whatever on the chalkboard (laughs) and then she gets the wrong answer and they're like oh my god they're like look let's just accept it we'll be here all night yeah (laughs) well you know I got to say, I, maybe it was on the e-version, but that that last problem made no sense. Like, that was not math. That was like, that was not fractions. It was not exponentials. I don't know what that was. So maybe it came out funny on the e-book, but, but I don't know what they were looking for on that either. And dudes, I took a lot of math. <laughs> um, so, so that was a little weird to me, but... Um. Yes, I'm a nerd. Sorry. Uh, But yeah, no, I was sitting there using my fingers too, like trying to count it out with her. And I was like, nope, I would fail. (laughs) I would get the wrong answer. I'm like, not math. Like, they're going to instantly say I'm not a prime because I can't do the math. (laughs) (laughs) With hers, I think it was less about like transforming into the beast is a prime skill is makes her a prime no matter what. The, the, The test was whether she could be um, herself. whether she was allowed to not go to prison. Right. Mm-hmm. So because the, how much reason and control I, does she have as yes, the beast? Yes. So that was the, that was really, I don't know if it was prison, but I think it was, Oh yeah. I know that they're okay. So. okay. Well, I thought it was not like maybe psych word or whatever they did with that other woman who was a, a beast and couldn't control herself. She wasn't in jail. She was yeah, just she was. like, no, they, they kind of locked her away and kept her sedated, which is why she was able to give birth to their father. Right. But I think Victoria that took be, over. But that could be anything but prison. That could be like just a, a government dark site. It could be a psych that place. It, That's all prison. I, I guess, but in prison. I guess. Technicality is fine. <laughs> okay. So locked up. You just get locked away. Locked up away from everybody and everything and, and like might as well just be executed maybe even like experimented on so bleh so that was but she passed with flying color yeah. so we're so, she's safe mm-hmm. happy ending so far uh um, yeah yeah she had a great scene when she uh she came down and took care of that arcane monster mm-hmm. on the interstate like, and they made sure to mention there were dozens of cell phones recording. Like, okay, she's not going to hide yep. anymore. <laughs> yeah, but that's also kind of cool that because their trials were sealed, yes, a handful of people know. But if they follow the rules, like when they yank that other guy away for interfering with the um, trials, right? Yep. If they follow yeah. their own rules... I mean, obviously she'll be out it, you know, they'll know it's her eventually, but she's kind of safe for now, for now. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I she's think- their other black horse right now. Well, not really. Cause she's registered. She's registered, well, but no one's actually, well, I guess they can put two and two together. Just, you know, yeah. well, that's I her. Think, I would think, I mean, the houses have access to all, all those registries, right? So within the, the world of the, the mages, people are going to know what she can do. Well, only so far, because remember with the registry, you can request, but you have to say, okay, give them my stuff. Yeah. Well, that's, so they get to see, I think what they're registered as like, okay, if you're a true seeker, you show us a true seeker, but all the details of your business, you have to approve someone to see it. That's neither send them the basic or the very detailed thing. Right. That's the genetic. Even then. That's the genetic stuff, but in the houses, they register their talent and their level, right? That's, that's right. appears to be public information. So, it is. so if they, if they say she's a beast of Cologne and she's a prime, that's not a dark horse. The dark horse is when they don't No, it's okay, not. Qualify. Yeah. The dark horse is when they don't go and have a trial and they just stay off the registry, off the, um, the house registry, not necessarily. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, um, the, I think the people who are reading it right now are very lucky because when I read it and the the PR was saying this is the end of the series, it was very disappointing for me because I wanted more. I, I really, really wanted mm-hmm. more. And the, the, the scene was awesome. I loved it. But it felt like because it came right after the big battle scene, um, which was really the climax of the story that this part felt a little 
a bit of a, I don't know if the letdown is the right word, but it really felt like um, an afterthought almost. It wasn't completed. Yeah. So, I mean, and it's so interesting, like, oh. And that's why I said it didn't feel like the end to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's not, so we're all happy, but the, but when I read it, it was supposedly the end and the trials made me want, especially made me want so much more in this world and to know more about Arabella and more about, um, um, the other sister and, um, they kind of skipped over Burns' trial. They just gave the outcome. So I think, I think that the seeds are there, but not necessarily. It's also set up to be maybe maybe we just won't do that one, you know, because it's he's a little he's a prime he's mm-hmm. a prime, and we didn't go into a lot of detail. But I really liked Burn. I love Burn. I would love to get a story yeah. for him. I, I hope so. We talked about the others' trials. We didn't talk about Catalina's trial. Yeah. I think that was pretty awesome. It was. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was. The way that she goes about, like, kind of disarming him, mm-hmm. you know, asking him regular questions, like, mm-hmm. kind of, like, seeping in there on the sly. And then before you know it, a prime has moved over the line and he went for her. But the best part was he was able to shake it off. I'm like, oh, oh, look at that. Yeah. Which bothers her. Yep. I mean, yeah. I, I, it, so she's, she's so freaked out about him. You remember that, that scene in the middle where he follows her on Instagram and she deletes her account. <laughs> oh my God, she flipped out. She just deletes the whole account. I'm like, what is wrong with you, girl? That is a teenager for you. Like, really? Right? Oh, yeah. Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i like that so yeah all their trials were really fun to read i think i do think like you guys said we kind of got the short end of the stick with burns trial but i think we'll learn more about him later mm-hmm. we'll yeah. see more i he's he's such a good hero material i can't wait to read about him and i'm just gonna assume that eventually they'll get to him so <laughs> talking about time jumps right so they could they could do catalina and then they could go to burn because he's older so they don't have to wait like six or seven years for him to be an actual adult yeah no but anyway no okay so yeah so i just i love the scene but i felt like it was placed kind of funny right there at the very end and we don't really see much that happens after the trial and i don't know it it really it didn't feel exactly like series baiting but it really definitely made me want more in the world well what about the final final scene with Victoria oh, with the in her prison yeah. cell outside with the flowers yeah. and whatnot and the mystery man. Yeah, that definitely was like, okay, you can't end it like that. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely series baiting. I think. Yeah, that was the series bait right there. Mm-hmm. That was the like, we're yeah. not actually done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you want more or not? <laughs> no, that was that was good. Um so yeah, I don't know else what else to say about that. It was very, um, I don't know, classic cliffhanger, I guess. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have any guesses as to who he was or who Caesar I think is? I think it's going to be somebody that we've not seen before. Yeah, I agree. I hope so. I agree. It's going to be, I, it, I, I mean, honestly, with how long these little arcs of different stories, it could just go on and on. It could be a long time before we figure out who this is. Yeah, and remember, this is all just Houston, right? So this mm-hmm. the Caesar mm-hmm. movement could be bigger than the. It's it's more about the United States, I think, and maybe I don't know about the world, but um, it's changing the house, non-house pol- political um, balance of power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, with the foreshadowing, even between. Catalina and old boy I mean this could become an international thing real fast I mean and if we look ahead to the books we know Catalina gets a trilogy so Mm -hmm. I think this could become an international incident (laughs) who knows they've already brought in like the the weather mage character was uh, um, Mm -hmm. Nigerian I think so yeah yeah fun times which was super cool. I liked her too. She didn't have a whole lot of page time, but she but she was manifesting her powers by dancing. I thought that was kind of a neat little sidebar. 
Yeah, I thought it was not enough. I feel like they just kind of threw her in there. Like, yeah, we know that Rogan went down to, you know, try to work with them or get them on his side and all this other stuff. But, you know, it was interesting. It was a little peak. I mean, I was definitely um, intrigued, not satisfied with what we saw from her. We need more, a lot more. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, so we're coming up on an hour. Let's rate. Okay. Nicola, you want to go first? Six. (laughs) Six, okay. (laughs) Six out of five again. Woo! <laughs> I love this trilogy. Okay, how about you, Casey? I'll give it a five out of five. I love this trilogy so much, and I love it every time I reread it. And I know I'm going to reread it again in the future and love it just as much. So yeah, five out of five. I'm going to go against the grain. I'm going to give it a four out of five. Yeah. Um, I really liked it. And actually, it's funny. I looked at my last rating. I gave it a four last first time, too. Um, I really liked it. I think the world and the magic is easy for people to understand and keep track of, which is excellent. Mm -hmm. So I think even people who aren't huge fantasy readers could enjoy this series and not feel like overwhelmed because it's too much fantasy or too complicated. And I definitely recommend the series. I just feel like I didn't feel as excited at the end of this as I was in the previous installments. So, yes. But it left me wanting more. So wonderful Yay. stuff. <laughs> read it. Everybody should read it. Okay. So for you guys, we have a couple of announcements uh, before we sign off for the day. We're going to blast through these so we don't uh, keep you too long past an hour. But we do want to start off with letting you guys know that there is a giveaway right now. It's currently running. And you want to enter this because this is going to be the next series we're going to read in January. Uh, So there is a giveaway for the Night Huntress series by Janine Frost on ShelfAddiction.com. You need to go there to see the details. You can win the series in either ebook or MP3 download. And there will be three winners. That's amazing. Yes. That's so generous. Yes. Thank you, Janine. Thank you, yes, Janine. Thank you, Janine. Um, so you guys want to get in on that because we're going to read those at, starting in January, and you want to be one of the lucky three that get all of the books. So yes. You have to buy them. <laughs> Let's see what else. There was one more thing, right? Or was that it? I think that's it. Just the giveaway. Okay. Then that we're reading it. Right. So kind of skipped over the part where guess what our next series is. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Oops. I told you what it is. <laughs> Yay! Cat and Bones. I'm so Cat and excited. Bones. Cat and Bones are the best. I love them. It's such a fun series. It is. So we are shifting from magic wielders to vampires and other things. Yes. Yeah. But mostly vampires. Yeah, mostly vampires. So get ready. It's an adult series. If you guys aren't familiar, we're reading another adult series. So we get to have some sexy time and some more adult themes. So it's good. Chapter 32. See you then. Yes. Oh, Lord. (laughs) The infamous. The infamous. The infamous. So yeah, you guys get excited. You guys don't want to miss out on this. Enter the giveaway. If you don't win, buy all the books because you'll it's love so them. Good. You'll right. be happy you bought them. Or library. Yep. Actually, by now, you guys would have heard in the group. So this is a, a, a reminder for you. And if you're not in the group, this is new to you. So you should join the group. Join the group. Official, join the group. So you know ahead of time. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yes. Happy, happy reading. reading. And we will see you in 2020. Woo! 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 <laughs> okay, take care, everybody. If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading. Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is, you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn. Ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn. Tell people to stay off the lawn. Compare it to your neighbor's lawn. And complain about having to mow the lawn again. 
good news is, it's easy to bundle home and auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance. Which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discount not available in all stages or situations. And now, an ad from Dad. <clears throat> all right, save money on car insurance when you bundle home and auto with Progressive. Can I take these off? All right. What is this? This looks good. Wow. That's well made. Where did you get this? I'm talking to you with the hair. Yeah, where did you get this? It's good stuff. That's solid. That's not veneer. That's solid stuff. Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discounts not available in all states or situations.